Hey, you all, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the great state of Oklahoma, or specifically Guthrie, Oklahoma. And uh, more specifically than that, we are at Summit View Cemetery in their Boot Hill section, the Boot Hill section of the cemetery, the Old West section of the cemetery. This is a smaller Boot Hill Cemetery. It only has uh, three graves in it. Let's take a look. We have William Bill Doolin. He was killed August 25th, 1896, near Lawson, Oklahoma, territory by Deputy United States Marshal Heck Thomas. Oh, I love that name, Heck Thomas. Oh, I'm gonna change my name to that, and his posse. You know, I, when I die, I don't want the person that murdered me, I don't want their name to be on my tombstone. That just feels weird. You see someone, they've left a boot in memory of Bill Doolin. Who's this? I have trouble reading that one. If you can tell what that says, let me know in the comments section. But over here, this third grave, this is the reason we came out here. The grave of Elmer McCurdy. Okay, so pay close attention. Elmer McCurdy, shot by Sheriff's Posse in the Osage Hills on October 7th, 1911. And here's where it gets interesting. Returned to Guthrie, Oklahoma from Los Angeles County, California for burial April 22, 1977. Killed in 1911, but was not buried for 66 years. So let's start this story from the time when Elmer was actually alive. Now Elmer was in uh, the United States Army. He uh, had learned to work with nitroglycerin uh, to assist in demolition projects. And um, after being discharged from the Army, he would become a Wild West outlaw. And he would use this nitroglycerin training in his burglaries, in his, in his, in his criminal acts. And, you know, what that was most useful for is blowing open safes where he could get the money inside. But apparently, uh, Elmer was a bit of a bumble butt. He, uh, he, he wasn't exactly as good at using nitroglycerin as he, as he thought he was. And he was notorious for using too much nitroglycerin and blowing up money and destroying the money that he was trying to steal. Now... Elmer and his buddies, they had, they had a plan, a big robbery that was going to make them rich. There was a train that had $400,000 on it. And this was, you know, we're talking 1911 money, so that's quite a huge amount of money. So uh, Elmer and his friends set out to rob this train that would make them rich, but sadly, they robbed the wrong train. Kind of a, kind of a series of comical uh, misfires here in Elmer's life as an outlaw. Not the greatest outlaw. So uh, they ended up robbing the wrong train and ended up making away, making away with forty-six dollars, significantly less than the original intended four hundred thousand sum. Now uh, Elmer was depressed. He went and got drunk. But uh, even though it was just a small amount of money, the um, the marshals went after him, and they ambushed him and his posse, and Elmer ended up getting shot in the shootout. Now, Elmer was sent to the local funeral parlor, where he was preserved with arsenic, and so his instead of instead of the, you know the traditional. Uh, procedure for embalming. He was per he was preserved with arsenic. Now, my understanding was this was a, a experimental procedure at the time. Um, they used it for when they didn't know when the funeral would be because they didn't know how to get a touch with Elmer's family. So instead of using the traditional method, they would preserve in arsenics and turning them into a mummy. So Elmer was almost perfectly preserved as a mummy. And uh, no one ever came. No one ever, he said of a sad life, no one ever came to pick up Elmer, claim his body, or pay for a funeral. So the uh, funeral parlor director decided, nah, what are you gonna do? So they stuck Elmer in a closet 
and uh, they pay, they charge people to view him, uh, saying that he was the outlaw that refused to die. And this would begin a wild voyage for Mr. McCrudy. Um, the funeral home was actually contacted by people claiming to be Elmer's family, who eventually came to the funeral home and claimed the bodies. But they were not his family. They were uh, operators of a carnival, and they wanted this exhibit for their own sideshow and would continue displaying Elmer as the bandit who would never give up in their traveling sideshow. Now in uh, 1922, Elmer would be sold again to a wax museum uh, where he would be put on display with other wax figures of other outlaws uh, such as Jesse James. So Elmer would continue to change hands. He would uh, end up going back on the sideshow circuit and then in the 1930s uh, wound up uh, belonging to a director who made a movie called Narcotics. And the, the, this would be an anti-drug movie, you know, kind of reefer madness type movie. And to help promote his movie, he would put Elmer in the lobby of the movie theater. But um, he didn't even use the whole backstory of him being an outlaw. He claimed that uh, Elmer, who was actually eroding and decaying and, and starting to look really gruesome at this point, he used Elmer and said that Elmer was a crazed drug addict who had ravaged his body with all the effects of doing all these drugs. So he would be in the lobby of the movie theater to horrify people and show them the dangers of drug use. Now Elmer would eventually make, make it into a movie himself. Uh, he was moved around and ended up in a prop warehouse in Los Angeles and was used in a 1960s movie called She Freak, which I've, I've never heard of. So if any of you have heard of She Freak, uh, let me know. So after his time in the movies, um, Elmer would be passed on and purchased by legendary wax museum icon Spoonie Singh for his uh, Hollywood Wax Museum. And um, he would rent out Elmer. Elmer would tour a country again. This corpse went on so many road trips and so many tours across the country. Elmer would end up going to Niagara Falls for a display. But uh, people decided that Elmer was actually looking a little too rough, that it was scaring people, that his body was too gruesome to use in wax museums anymore. And um, he was sold to a theme park in Los Angeles. So you got to understand, after all this passing around, being in different wax museums, different uh, attractions, the fact that Elmer was a real human being kind of got lost to time. Um, they thought he was a prop, uh, a wax figure, and he ended up being sold to the Pike Amusement Park in, in Long Beach, uh, in the Los Angeles area. And he was actually placed in a funhouse, the Laugh in the Dark Funhouse on uh, on Long Beach, and where he would be just a prop. They, apparently he was painted, he was painted weird colors and like hung from a rope. And um, they were using this uh, funhouse in an episode of the Six Million Dollar Man in 1970s. So during the filming, um, Elmer got damaged. They, someone bumped into his body and his arm broke off. And when his arm fell down, they realized there was a human bone sticking out of it. So they called the police and they examined the body. They went by dental records and did some genealogy research and were actually able to pinpoint that this was indeed Elmer McCurdy, who had been on a wild ride, you know, a 60 plus year wild trip as a dead body. When the police examined Elmer, he actually had tickets from the crime museum from the 20s shoved in his mouth that he was still holding for decades after the museum was closed. So, they would finally return our boy Elmer here to Guthrie, Oklahoma and give him a proper burial here at this grave site. And allegedly, there, after they put the body in, they filled the hole with concrete to ensure that Elmer could never be pulled up. Because, 
you know, he is preserved. He can never decay. And, and he, so he is a, you know, he did take some damage. So he's a rough looking mummy down there, but they wanted it sealed so people could not get in there and steal poor Elmer McCurdy. There's a little side story here that I think is really fascinating. So, um, the people that created the show He-Man, um, one of the creators was walking at the Laugh at the Dark theme park in uh, Long Beach when he was a child. And they dropped down the prop of Elmer McCurdy in front of him and scarred him for life as a child. And he always grew up with that image of Elmer McCurdy and his skeletal face his whole life. And when they went to develop the villain for the He-Man series, he created the character Skeletor and based the idea of Skeletor on the image of Elmer McCurdy that had scarred him as a child. So, you know, for all intents and purposes, we are standing here at the grave of the real life Skeletor. I'll get you, He-Man. Now this story seems completely insane, and it is. But um, the shocking thing is that this sort of thing happened more often than you'd imagine. I have visited the graves of two other uh, mummies that were preserved in funeral homes. You have uh, uh, Spaghetti, the mummy. <laughs> he was an Italian uh, circus worker who was uh, murdered and then left behind as the circus moved along. So the funeral home preserved him and um, named him Spaghetti because he was Italian, which is kind of racist. But um, he ended up uh, being left out as a as a as a exhibit to see until um, apparently Italian mafia members came down uh, from New York and told them that they better bury him and quit disrespecting his body. Um, and then there's Speedy, Speedy the Mummy, was an African American man uh, who was a fisherman who died in uh, Paducah, Kentucky, and they kept him as a mascot for their funeral home until uh, they finally decided to bury him. So yeah, the, the, the preserved, unburied funeral mummy is a absolute bizarre phenomenon here in America. But I do think Mr. Elmer McCurdy, Skeletor himself, I really feel like his story kind of takes the case. I think it is the most wild and crazy story as far as, as these mummies go. So thank you for joining me here at the Summit View Cemetery here in Guthrie, Oklahoma as we relive the story of Elmer McCurdy, the bandit who wouldn't give up, the embalmed outlaw Skeletor himself. If you'd like to hear more weird stories like this or other places I've visited, I visit uh, roadside attractions, amusement parks, uh, haunted houses, museums, all sorts of fun stuff, all that information is in the description of this video. If you would uh, like to help support the channel, consider uh, buying a t-shirt, consider donating to Patreon. $3 or more will get you a postcard once a month. Also now selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop. All that information is in the description of this video. But until next time, this once in the bag.